So welcome back everyone for another episode of IGCSC Maths. My name is Devon and I'm your host for today's episode. And of course, we, we still have Ivan, our expert. He'll be guiding us today with our new topic. So Ivan, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, welcome uh, back to this uh, continued of geometry. Well, it's vectors and transformations, but kind of we're continuing our geometric aspect of the IGCSC E. So um, as Devin said, my name is Ivan. And um, for those of you who might have uh, missed the previous sessions, I was, uh, well, I am a gra uh, graduate from the University of Cambridge and I did pure maths. And so I'm here to teach you guys some stuff for IGC that might help you for your exam. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So um, today I will be going through the definition of vectors uh, and Basically, we will um, be looking at transformations also, um, and these, in some sense, could be, uh, well, they're like linear transformations, like matrices. Uh, have they gone through matrices at this point, Devin? Oh, oh uh, no. matrices are gone from the syllabus. Okay, so they're gone from the Okay, well, um, these transformations are uh, can be written as matrices, and so we will see that come up, and, and, and naturally vectors and... and um, these transformations are, are important things. So um, yeah, that's what we'll be going through. And it, as always, it's best to get right into it. So, um, okay, so vectors. So these these guys, these um, are, well, they have both a quantity, uh, both a direction and a magnitude. So when we specify a vector, let to specify what direction it's pointing in and how long how big the vector is. Um, usual notations um, is when you talk about a vector, you put like a little arrow on top, and that kind of means that's a vector. Well, you know, sometimes you say uh, a point in the plane is like x, y, and you can refer to it as a point, or you can refer to it as a vector from the origin. And um, that's why it's sometimes useful to be clear about what you mean. Um, Addition of vectors, so when you add two vectors, there's like a little parallelogram law coming through. So if you add, say, this vector A and this vector B. Now, in reality, kind of the B is is kind of here, uh, you know, from the origin, they're both kind of there. So what you can visualize is you shift that vector to be here, and um, then you can add them. So what you end up getting is, and I haven't drawn it precisely, but you end up getting some sort of, Parallelogram there, and that's the parallelogram rule. Um, and as, as I said here, it doesn't matter which order we add them. Another point, an important point is that um, is that sometimes you might have the say vector pointing in this direction, right, um, from the origin. And so, if we if we say this is B here, this is A, um, then the this vector here is b to a and usually written as uh, b a with the arrow on top right um and so what you see here is that b a is this vector small this vector b plus a but in fact the b that you would be referring to is actually the negative of this vector so in fact a minus b is what b a is that's an important formula, and A points in the direction of our point A, and B is there, and so A minus B is what's B A, B to A kind of thing. So that, yeah, that's one, yeah, so this this here, this vector that we've drawn here is actually in the other direction, therefore it's negative B. Um, and that's just an important point to note. Okay, so multiplication by a scalar, uh, when you write it in X, Y form, that would just be uh, multiplying these coefficients by some scalar. So you have a, uh, uh, when, you, when you multiply a vector by some scalar, you're going in the same direction, but they're making it larger by some factor. And so as I said here, top number is horizontal component, bottom number is a vertical component, um, so x, y, and three x, y would just be three x and three y, that's the vector. Um, and and there are some nice rules also to find midpoints of um, lengths and stuff, which we will which we'll see uh, later on. So, 
Um, okay, so parallel vectors. So vectors are parallel if they're in the same direction. Um, this in some senses is a, a very much a gradient question, right? So, so if you find that y on x is the same as the, the y on x on using two different vectors, then they're, you know, they are, they are um, well, they are, and then, and then some sense in the same direction. That, that's kind of what we're referring to here. Um, in general, a vector a times x, y is parallel to b times x, y for any a and b. Um, you can just see this by a times x, y is a, a x, a y, b x, b y, and then the ratio of these guys is just y on x, y on x, and they're the same. Um, a modulus of a vector is simply you find the length of the vector and because it's horizontal vertical, it's just pi tag. So it's the square root of the squares of the horizontal vertical components. Okay, and last kind of topic for today's rotations and reflections and, and uh, transformations in general. So when describing a reflection, the position of the mirror line is essential. Um, and a rotation, you have to describe the center of rotation and the angle in which it's rotated. So you can see here that um, this line, say uh, x equals zero, is uh, what what you would what the kind of um, what the mirror would be the mirror line. So x equals zero, and then you reflect this point here. Uh, sorry, reflected image is this here. So the pre-image is this. So b goes to b prime. Uh, C goes to C prime and A goes to A prime. Um, what's important to note is that if you're going clockwise at B, so B, C, A, a reflection will change the orientation. So say we go clockwise now from B, um, we go B dash A dash C dash, right? So we're not going B, C, A, we're going, B dash, we're going the other way. So, re so reflections kind of um, like invert they, the, the, the orientations change. And that's what's important to note when you wanna make sure something's a reflection. Um, or, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, reflection. A rotation, however, the orientation state does stay the same. Um, in this case, this is a, a rotation and it's in the um, uh, anti-clockwise direction. Um, and so what's happening is that this point here is going to this point there and this point here is going to this point there. This point here, sorry, I'll just maybe point that out, but this point is going to that point. And you can then identify uh, this in there and make an arrow. So yeah, there, there's an arrow there from this point to this point, and it's the same as there. Oh, sorry, sorry. That shouldn't be the corresponding, it should correspond to this point, sorry. So we have an arrow going to there. And um, what you note is that the orientation, so if we go um, anti-clockwise now, yeah, well, anti-clockwise will identify the same points in the triangle. So rotations preserve that orientation. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a key point here. Um, and so we'll see more of this later on. Um, anything you wanna add, Devin? Or mm, I guess that's it. Yeah, just ha when you describe rotation, don't forget to put the center of rotation, the direction of rotation, and by how much it has rotated, like the degrees. The yeah. Angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Devin, um, as an example in this in this one, um, how would you find the center of rotation in this in this? Oh, one here? there's actually a very there's a a rigorous method for it so uh so the, there's the method so um, how, how, let's see how to explain it so first you should connect the corresponding points from the image and the pre-image when you have a line then you have to perpendicular perpendicularly bisect it so let's yeah. say this is your line you have to bisect it like this yeah now you have to do it for every uh yeah like that every point and you'll see that the bisected line will meet in one point that is the center of rotation exactly yeah so this is yeah so so this is what um 
this is what, what I, was, I was talking to Devin about because um, in some sense, this is not an easy task to do. So you yeah, need to find these perpendiculars the easy and, and the center of rotation will be this point here. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but in some sense, you can, you can kind of, in the diagram, guess it. And, and that's what Stevens pointed out to you. Can, you you yeah. don't have to justify which point it is. Because in IGCSE, the center of rotations are always in integers. So uh, it's really okay. easy to guess. <laughs> it's yeah, really this easy to visualize and guess what's the center of rotation. You can just you know visualize, oh, if it's in here, it'll rotate like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, we'll see in the questions later. Perfect. OK, yeah. So in this, in this case, um, um, uh, Devin and I will be really working together. <laughs> yep. OK, cool. <laughs> Uh, translation. So translations is not is this one's this one's easy to find. So when you want to find translation, you just want to find by what vector it's translated. You only need the corresponding point. So this is i. This is the corresponding, and so i prime is the corresponding point. And we just figure out by what how to get from i to i dash, and you'll be shifting it one, two, three, four, five, six, six across here. And one, two, three, four. So you'll be shifting it by um, plus six, but negative four in the y direction. So your vector is going to be um, six. Uh, sorry, this is the unfortunate mouse. Six and negative four. And um, and yeah, so that's important to note. That oh, that one's pretty simple. Um, enlargement. So yeah, as, as we see here in enlargement, you will need to um, find the corresponding points in just two of them, and then draw where those points meet. And that'll be your center. And so the point is here is that um, whatever this enlargement was, which it seems to be enlargement of factor of two, this triangle here, or say this was your initial triangle there, then your enlarging is by a factor of a half. So you was, you, from this point here, you were then saying, okay, I take this point and a half in that direction, I get this point, and the same thing here and the same thing there. So these, these things rigorously um, can be a bit challenging to do, but as Devin said, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to justify it, so that's cool. Okay, work out, let's, let's get into some problems. Okay, so, um, so these are just kind of, I guess, free, free sort of questions. So we have to add 2p and q. So we uh, 2 times uh, 2 times p is going to be 8, 10, and q is negative 2, 7. So when we add these, we get 6 and 7 thing. You, uh, when you add vectors, you do it component-wise. So the x is add and the y is add. When you're trying to find magnitude, again, that would just Pythagoras. So We've done this a million times. Four squared plus five squared is um, it's not thirty-one; it's forty-one. <laughs> um, don't make that mistake. But yeah, it's that easy. Just state the square root of the sum of squares: four squared and, and five squared. Okay. Now, um, so part B. Uh, we have to find the coordinates of B, given that A is this and A to B is that. So recall that a to b is the vector b minus the vector a. We can consider a point as a vector. It's just four one, so four in the in the um, top column and uh, sorry, the top row and one in the bottom row. Um, and so to find b, we would just add if we take a to the other side, right here. Uh, it would just be a and then plus. And with like a little squiggly line on, on top. Okay, so um, A could be thought of as a vector, and then we add the two vectors and we get B. Um, if you want, you could also draw it and just see that that makes sense. It's, it would be a parallelogram kind of law right there. Um, okay, next question. So in our diagram, O is the origin, sure, um, OT equals two times TB. So uh, this length here is, is um, well, it's half of this length here. So it's a third of the total length. That's something always important to note. 
Um, M is the midpoint of TC. OC is this vector C, so we can denote that as C. Uh, we can even put a squiggle line if we want, just to be clear. Um, and OD is, is some vector D. Um, yeah. And uh, we want to find the position vector of M. Given M is the midpoint of TC, so if we find OT and OC, then M would just be the average of those two vectors. Okay. So we, we just we so we want to find OT first. Um, to find OT, well, uh, this is two thirds of OD. So OT is two thirds of D. Um, the reason for that is that when you look at by parts, so we have a ratio of two to one. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is two parts, and this is uh, one part. So my two is looking a bit funky there. That's two parts, and this is one part. So OT is two-thirds of, of OD. So OT equals two-thirds of OD. Um, and we have C. So M is just going to be the average of OT and uh, OC which is just the half of two thirds of D plus C, which is third D and um, a half C. So if we got a third D would be about here and a half C would be about there and, and the parallelogram law would, would give that. And yeah, we can kind of a sanity check, make sure that that makes sense by drawing the half and the, the third here and knowing that this is like a, then a parallelogram law. Like but you don't have to do these things obviously but it's good to know. Okay, so next question, um, M and N, write M and N uh, in terms of P and Q in simplest form. Uh, so P is AD and B, uh, sorry, and Q is AB. So we can draw these vectors right here. Uh, right, and make this. Okay. Um, we have to find MN. So remember, MN is going to be, well, it's going to be this vector here. And that vector is going to be the vector of N minus the vector of M once we fix an orientation. Now, since we're given AB and AD, it's natural to set A as our origin. So we're going to set A as our origin. And now we have to find AN. So, and an AM. The simple one is AM. So, the ratio between AB and BM is one to one. So, AB is a half of AM. So, AM is two AB. The ratio of AD to DN is three on two. So, AD is three fifths of AN, because the total part is five. Um, so, to get AN from AD, you would multiply by 5 on 3. So AN equals 5 on 3P, because P is AD, and AM equals 2Q. And now we just have to find MN. So MN is AN, this vector here, minus AM. Um, and that's just 5 on 3P minus 2Q. Okay, and so the next question is, given that the straight line NM cuts BC at X and X is the midpoint of MN, we have to find what BX is in terms of P. Basically, that's the question. Now, there is a kind of... Um, so I wanted to give you a solution where it incorporates more than just the vectors. Um, and so... We know that B is the midpoint of AM, and now we know that X is the midpoint of MN. Um, well, we could have even derived that, uh, because the triangle XBM is actually similar to NAM. In fact, it's just you delay to from M, enlarge from M by a factor of a half to go from MAN to MXB. So, really, BX is just a half of AN. 
uh, by that deletion rule. So we will use that now, and we find that bx is a half of an, and from the previous question, uh, an we know is uh, 5 on 3p, so bx is just half times 5 on 3p, which is 5 on 6p. Um, and, and, and I guess this little sanity check would be P is AD. We're given that um, A, B, C, D, this parallelogram is, is a parallelogram. So in particular, B, C is also equal to P. And, and B, X seems to be a bit smaller than P, right? So, so 5 on 6 kind of makes sense. I mean, and obviously, we've proven it, but it's always good to be check your work because as... Previously, I've made errors, so and obviously I don't do that, but I recommend that you do that <laughs> because that, you know, you'll be in an exam. Okay, uh, Devin, is that is that all good? Anything else? Yeah, that's all good. That's all good. All right, cool. Okay, so now move on to the transformation kind of questions, and I wanted to make a point. Um, so, for example, you'd be asked to draw the image of triangle A, so this triangle here. Um, under from the line y equals negative x. So there is um there is a point is, is is do we have to do this like geometrically or can we do these questions like do we have a rule to do them and and there is a rule really um so if we draw the line uh, y equals negative x we well, need to figure out what happens to the x and y components. So let's do a little test vector. So we have this vector. 0, 1, right? And this is really our representation of x. And the, the, the flip across y equals negative x takes uh, 1, 0, 1 to negative 1. Uh, sorry, uh, it takes it, so it takes one, um, one, zi one zero, the vector 1, 0, because, yeah, 2, uh, it takes it to, sorry, um, I'm sorry, I'm just, so it takes the vector 1, 0, 2, 0, negative 1. Okay. And, and also it, it takes 0, 1 here to, um, sorry, yeah, it takes 0, 1 here to uh, negative 1, 0. Uh, so I was, I was just confusing my x and y's uh, while I was saying it. Um, so it takes this to there. So it takes the initial vector there. And, um, and that vector there. So what actually happens, and we can write the transformation explicitly, is taking x, y to negative y, negative x. And the reason that, and the reason why that's, why that's happening um, is because we've seen that a y coordinate of one goes to an x coordinate of negative one. A y, an x coordinate of one goes to a y coordinate of negative one, and, and they actually just do that in general because it's, uh, you've got a linear transformation rule. You could just remember, obviously, that um, that is that, but that that is a that is a way to do it. And so, what you would get is you'd get okay. So, I have one, two, here, and um, now all I need to do is struggle into this formula. So, um, x coordinate of one would go to a y coordinate of negative one, and and uh, and uh, sorry, and y coordinate of two would go to an x coordinate of negative two. Um, sorry, yeah, and so this would go, sorry, a y coordinate of 2 would go to an x coordinate of negative 2, so um, we would get um, a negative 1 for our uh, y and a negative 2 for our x, so the point here that's going to be uh, reflected is going to be here. Uh, sorry, here. So that, uh, it should be. It should be here. Sorry. So um. So we. So we have x is one, and that goes to uh, y coordinate omega. Sorry. Yeah. It's 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 right there. So let me just um erase uh, these things. So yeah. So um. It go, so it goes. So one two goes to the point negative two negative one, and right there. So you could have just reflected. It, you know how, how you wanted. However, um. I I find that it's 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 useful to be um kind of. Uh, not rely on the geometry in some sense because it can be, you could make an error. However, once we've now um, sorted out what a tr uh, transformation will do, we can then uh, we can
we can then we can then do the same thing. So we have this corner is five two, and so it's going to go to uh, it's going to go to negative two, and then negative five. So here, so that's going to be this uh, rotation. It's going to be this rotation, and so to get this guy, we can do a similar thing, or we can just um, we can just guess where, where it's going to look like because it's going to preserve all angles. So we're going to get a triangle here, and this length is one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So here, and we got our image right there. So this triangle here goes to this triangle there. Um, great. So that's how you could do that question. Um, now we, we can do, uh, so now we have to translate our triangle A by the vector negative two, negative nine. Um, so the transformation law, X will go to X minus two and Y will go to Y minus nine. Um, and so all you need to do, again, is what we've done here. So I won't, I won't do that question because it's, it's much simpler, but basically you would have to take the X one of this guy, shift by negative two, and then go down by negative nine. And that would end up here. here. And you would do the same for all the points, and um, you'd get, then get the, what the triangle is. So you'd get that point kind of probably, uh, yeah. So it would, it would shift there, so this point. Um, would would go by x minus two in there, and you would just um, yeah do a translation like that. Um, is is there anything you want to add there, Devin, or mm, is that? Yeah, I guess that's it. But mm, I guess you can try delete the, your workings. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, sure. Um, yeah, I'll erase it. So yeah, uh, and you can uh, draw this one right here. So you would get uh, there, and so that would be your image kind of thing by just figuring out where the points go. So I will, I'll raise it now. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Now our question is to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A into triangle B. So it seems like this is just a result of a dilation, uh, sorry, an enlargement. So we're going to draw these lines here and see where they meet. Um, if you draw it properly, uh, you should get that it should probably would meet right there at this point. Because as Devin said, they're integer points. So we can find that the, the point in which they intersect, if we draw this line as well, should be there. And that point is, well, it has height 8 and is negative 7 across. So negative 7, 8 um, is the point at which is the center. And the enlargement, well, we find the length of this guy. So this guy has a length of three. This guy has a length of six. So the enlargement is a half. So the answer would be enlargement of a half from the center of negative seven, eight. Right, Devin? Is that how they would yep. say it? Yep. Okay, cool. You can just uh, describe it straightforwardly. No problem. Yeah, okay. Um, right, so now for triangle A into triangle C. Uh, so as, as Devin pointed out, uh, we'll, the, the right way to do this will be to draw these uh, perpendicular bisectors and figure out where they meet. And in IGSC, IGSC uh, these will always be integer points, so roughly the perpendicular bisector would be there, and uh, the perpendicular bisector, this guy, there and so you can kind of see that the center is going to be zero zero so the answer is well once we can uh, be convinced that the rotation is a nine degree angle which this line here goes to this line there um, that's a nine degree angle because they're now perpendicular uh, right so we have a nine degree angle here um, you would just say a nine degree angle rotation around zero, zero, and the, the angle of rotation is quite clearly clockwise. And that's how you would answer the question. Is that right, Devin? All good? Yep. So you just have to say rotation, then um, rotated by 90 degrees clockwise with the center of zero, zero. Yeah. 
Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right. Okay. So now we have a similar question, and so um, we have to draw the image of the triangle T after reflection line uh, y equals negative one. Um, so the line y equals negative one is this line here. And so a very simple way of doing it would just be to really figure out, you know, okay, so we have to rotate across this. So at this point we'll go here. Um, this point will go there. And this point here would actually go right here. So the triangle would look like this. As we, as we talked about, rotations are like, um, they uh, reverse the orientation. So this is why it's now flipped. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's one way to do it. Another way would just be to figure out what it does to the X and Y components and then go from there. Um, now we have to draw the image of triangle T after rotation of 90 degrees about zero, zero clockwise. Uh, so as a general fact, I'll give you guys um, the formula for rotation across 90. Um, you take the Y coordinate and you do this kind of transformation where your X goes to negative Y and Y goes to X. Um, so uh, why, why does this happen? So um, if you had zero, one here, where would that go? But well, that'll just go to zero, one here, right? Um, and so your Y goes to X. However, your X would go to negative one. And that's why it's X goes to negative Y. Um, and so what you could do is you could just apply this formula. So we have a negative one, one. And so we would go to, uh, so the rotation of this square across the, um, across the, so the rotation of this guy across 90, well, we just go by our formula. So, um, the uh, x coordinate uh, would be negative y, and the y coordinate would be um, just what x is. So um, the rotation across um, clockwise would actually be. Uh, so I guess I've um, I guess I've written it for anti-clockwise here. Sorry. So it would be I've written it right there, but in fact it would be the opposite. So it'd be there. Um, so yeah, you could just draw it instead of my uh, way algebraically of, of uh, doing it. Um, and so you would draw the nine degree angles and see where they go. And the, the transformation I've written down, um, it works for clockwise. So anti-clockwise would actually be negative of this. So this should be uh, y and this should be negative x. Apologies for that. Um, and so Let's just um, let's just uh, do this properly. So your so your so if this is negative one one. Um, that would go to it would go to one one right there. Um, now this point here is x is negative four and y is two. So um, by our formula, the x coordinate will now be y, which is um, two here, and your um, your x, uh, sorry, your, um, yeah, and then your your uh, x coordinate, uh, where it is uh, there, would be, um, it would be, so yeah, x coordinate is y, and the y coordinate, sorry, is um, negative x. So x is negative 4, so the y coordinate here is um, 4 here, so the rotation across 90 will give you here. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so now we just define this point here, and you could kind of uh, figure that out by uh, kind of lengths and where it should be. So it would be, let me just, uh, I'll erase some points to make it a bit clearer, but it would be, triangle would be like so, with this right angle here. Um, and so let me just now erase some points. Yeah, so um, yeah, so the rotated uh, triangle, this point goes to here, this point goes to here, and this point goes to there. Um, you, could, you can do it multiple ways, obviously. Um, one way would be to find this point first, 
and then you would know it's an I degree triangle with the same lengths and and um, with the same yeah with the same lengths. So you could just draw the triangle like that. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, these uh, Devon is is would you would you recommend just doing it by hand or how how would you say they should do that? Mm, for letter C. Uh, for B, sorry, or, for B. Is it, oh, B. You, yeah. For B, you can you can just instantly draw the triangle. It's 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 also fine. Okay, okay. So just yeah, with with B, you just uh, draw. If you if you're good at drawing, just draw the triangle. Do they have like a, a compass and a protractor kind of thing? Uh, yeah, they're allowed to bring. They're allowed to bring rulers, compass, and protractors, and any yeah, you know, so, construction so toolkits. Exactly. So. Really, um, what you'd be doing is uh, you'd be finding uh, the line that's nine degree perpendicular to this line, and making sure that the lengths are equal. And as Devin said, they are integer points. Um, okay. Anyway, so let let's move on. This describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle T into triangle A. Now this one is is uh, it's, it looks like it's going to be a translation. So this point here goes to this point there. We can find what the translation is. Uh, so this point here, so to get from those two points, it would be go one, two, three, four, five, six. So six down and one, two, three, four, five. So five across. So the translation would be five, negative six. Oh, sorry, the, yeah, the translation would be five, negative six as um, for mapping triangle T to triangle A. That's all you need to say, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Cool. Okay. So now the last question. Um, we have a similar question, of course. Uh, so for triangle A, we have to draw its result after translation by the vector negative three two. Um, again, uh, you would you would just have to uh, we just have to figure that out. So you go from this point here, you go minus three. Um, in the in the x direction, so you'd go to five here, and then um, two up. So there, so this is what it's kind of doing. Um, for this guy, you'd go again minus three here, and then two up. So here, and then we could just find the length. This is uh, one, two, three. So one, two, three. They give us our triangle, and we just draw that triangle, and we get um, our image. Okay, now number two is to draw the triangle A after reflection of the y equals x. We talked about y equals x actually quite a lot. And so um, the uh, result of translating, um, of reflecting y equals x is just flipping the coordinates of y and x. Uh, so if this guy is um, negative one, four, you then get to four, negative one. So um, four, negative one here. Um, of course, uh, you could, of course, just draw the line, the y, y equals x properly. And um, you would just have to, with your uh, ruler or anything like that, you would just kind of really just draw the corresponding points. So it would, it would have to be equal lengths from the line perpendicularly. So if you draw this ruler, this would be a perpendicular angle. Um, this guy here. So um uh, we have a coordinates one two and so that would go to two one so two one here which is kind of obvious from the diagram obviously but um we can always use our formula and again this is a uh, negative two two and that would go to two negative two two negative two here and we get our triangle right there um yeah Okay, cool. And now we have to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A into triangle B. So uh, we we what we have to do is first figure out what what sort of translation it be. Oh, uh, so sorry, what so, sort of rotation? Uh, <laughs> what sort of transformation it would be? Um, and okay, so it seems like it's a rotation by ninety to get from A to B. But uh, the question is, uh, where is the rotation? Um, and so, as Devin's pointed out, you don't actually have to give kind of uh, 
justification for it. Uh, so we, we think it's an angle rotation by 90. We just have to find where it is and we can kind of um, see where it'll be. But if we draw the perpendicular bisectors um, from the corresponding points, we would see that it would kind of come at 1, 1. one uh, negative sorry, one. one negative one. And the rotation of A to B would be around one negative one. Uh, rotation of 90, and in this case, it's anti-clockwise. And um, yeah, so as Devin said, you don't have to really give the justification. So I'd recommend if you have your, to bring your compass and protract and whatnot to get this all precise. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how you would, that's how you would do it if you had a, a um, well, a, a ruler and a, um, yeah, a ruler could do this, right? Because ruler kind of gives you what the nine degree is and you would have to find what the half length is and draw the perpendicular bisector and draw two and they would meet at your point of your center of rotation. So the important get thing is to first figure out what the transformation is and then that would give you your, um, your center. Okay, so wrap up. Uh, we've gone through vectors and uh, we've also gone through transformations. Uh, these, um, these guys kind of play hand in hand. Uh, I was talking very much about, um, ab about the algebraic way to kind of see transformations, so rotation by 90 clockwise, anti clockwise, and things like that. The way I gave it was actually with anti clockwise. And so when asked for clockwise, you actually have to set the, the negative of, of what the transformation would be. But in any case, um, there are two ways to, to, to do that. But the recommended way, if you have geometric objects, is to just draw it. Um, and as Devin said, the order to be integers so that that just makes it all a bit easier um and yeah anything else you need to add Devin? uh yeah um so it's when you when you're having the test you don't have to do the perpendicular bisecting it's not necessary but if you want to be sure then of course you can back then when i did my igcse i didn't do any of those i just have to i just visualize and straight up say the answer and it's yeah. also fine they'll yeah there's yeah. they'll score you full marks too yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, of course, yeah, you can kind of look at the answer. However, um, yes, yeah, so for the person that wants to make sure that they're right. <laughs> yeah. But there, as you said, there's integer points, so there's not many options, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You kind of limit the yeah. options, so yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I have nothing else to say. And actually, there is something, oh. well, interesting from the comments there. Uh, they were praising your haircut. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so one person said, "I love Ivan's new haircut. Looks so clean with the sun glasses emoji." <laughs> right. And well, another one said, much. "Hi there, Ivan. I like your cut, G." Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, your cut, G. All right. Yeah. And of course, he said, "Keep up your good work." Okay. Cool. Well, I hope yeah, you guys enjoy. You do have a nice haircut. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, that's it for today. Uh, we got yeah, we got nothing else. So okay, so thanks everyone for watching. Uh, please, uh, you know, come again next. Ne what do you, how do you say it? Next time, yeah. No, yeah, next, yeah, next time. Oh, sorry, I'm having a brain like today. So come again yeah. next time. Go check out our Instagram website and come and join our Discord server. Come talk to us. And yeah. yeah, we'll see you next Sorry time. Sorry, it went a bit um, long. I think it was, what, like 43 minutes? We have 44. This is the longest episode we've ever been to. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> partly that was that was my fault with the um, <laughs> No, it's, with okay. The it's, it's okay. Hopefully it's you okay. guys, um, hopefully you guys can uh, learn, learn something from it. And yeah, shoot us a message if you had anything that was confusing or if... Um, if, yeah, if, if my explanations were a bit confusing, just shoot me a message. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. And have a. Yeah, see you next time.